the areas that I'd like to talk about that I see quite a bit in therapy are partners who use a lot of self-destructive behaviors in their relationships. I see these partners a lot because they go through relationships really quickly. If you're with someone and you ask them or you've remembered asking them why they do things that cause self-destruction to the relationship, to themselves, or they self-sabotage, you may be dating one of these people. Sometimes they get married, depending on the patience and the tolerance of their partner, but it's never easy. And when things are going well in a relationship or marriage, that's the perfect time for them to do something that's going to hurt it or take it backwards or make it struggle. And nobody, many times people don't consistently see this enough so that they ask them or they call them on it. But you usually know. And if you have this or you're with someone who does, I would really encourage you to start the journey of self-awareness so you can figure it out. I be, I'm beginning this by going through a list, a short list, of things that this looks like or what you may, what a self-destructor may say to themselves. Um, you feel like you need, need to end a relationship when it's getting really serious. You begin getting nitpicky about your partner's personality, their behaviors, or their looks. You consistently compare your present relationship with your past relationships. You cheat physically, emotionally, or sexually. Um, you start abusing alcohol or drugs or some other kind of addiction that you, you know will hurt the relationship. Anticipating things will go badly, expecting just the wrong thing to happen. Refusing to be wrong in your day-to-day -day life if you have a hard time accepting the fact that you could have maybe chosen a different way or your partner might have had a better option or choice to make. Um, feeling like you don't deserve love or that you don't really ever deserve a healthy relationship and then voicing that to your partner. I think when, when people have a personality glitch or a behavior glitch where they're automatically going to sabotage something good, the most important thing you need to do is you need to gain self-awareness and you need to think back and say, what, 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 why am I doing this? Did my parents do this? You need to start writing down just free association. What was my parents' relationship like? Was it healthy? What about your romantic relationships in the past? What were those like? Did they feel good? Did they make you feel guilty? Um, how about other people in your family? Not just your parents, but your siblings when you've had talks with them. What have you discovered about yourself? Were you always like that as a small child? Did somebody hurt you? Was there something going on that you were really never able to resolve or work through? Being aware is a skill, and the only way you can really make it happen more likely just out of, you know, many of us are self-aware all the time, but if you've pushed things down for so long, becoming self-aware is very difficult. And in order to make it secondhand, like you can pull it out anytime, you have to practice it. So that means you kind of got to go through a series of questions like this frequently about a lot of different relationships you have. Maybe the relationship you have with your parents. Maybe the relationship you have with your current girlfriend or boyfriend. Maybe someone you dated in the past or growing up a teacher or someone that was extremely influential for you. If you feel an emotion coming up when you're thinking back, rather than try to push it down or repress it, I want you to sit in it, especially if it's an awkward feeling, because those feelings are often dismissed and people try to distract themselves because they don't want to deal with it. But if you sit in it and you allow yourself to feel it, you'll start getting better ideas of where this came from. Where did this originate? This feeling that you had, that you would never deserve anything good. You would never deserve anyone who loved you consistently. And you started creating these self-destructive patterns. Next, 
you have to remember the very harsh reality. And that is when you become self-aware, the relationship you're in right now may not work because there may be a lot of things you're repressing and you're acting it out with self-sabotaging, self-destructive behavior. And if that's the case, then maybe it's something within this relationship. This person was chosen unconsciously, but yet they're following your pattern of sabotaging, of destructing a relationship. If you want to avoid, let's say you've dealt with this, you've become more self-aware, self and now you actually want to avoid doing self-destructive behaviors, this is going to help you. First of all, when you're, when you're the one that's destructive, it's important that you decide, I am going to change. With this person, it is going to be different. I, am, I don't have to do this anymore, and I am motivated to take the challenge. And that you start at that level, very a very logical, conscious talk with yourself. Because I'm telling you, you can have the best intentions, but until you do that, until you allow yourself to make the change and try something, nothing new is going to happen. Secondly, I want you to start using your self-awareness. I want you to go home every night and do your self, your self check is what I call it. It's when you ask yourself, what did I do that would help this partner? What did I do to promote this relationship? What did I do that could secretly um, make my partner feel unstable? Maybe feel vulnerable, maybe feel like I wasn't that attached. What am I afraid of? And I'm asking you to ask yourself that every after every date because fear is what drives self-destructive behaviors. Um, you must be willing to go to continue to go back, see the parallels, the root causes, and this is very difficult. If you came from in a home that had a lot of abuse and you were abused, and you see any cues that you're in now that align with that, it's important you go back to that in your mind, you write about it, and that you actually sit in that discomfort and just feel that again. Because until you cannot run away from that feeling, you're going to continue to self-destruct behaviors when they get too serious or too close. And you'll end up living a life that you look like a serial dater, but it's just because you're terrified of letting someone get close and you actually depending on someone for comfort, for love, for all the normal things you're supposed to depend on someone for. Next, you want to be able to be communicative because that's very important. So I want you to communicate with your partner what you decided, what you're what you're realizing with this analysis, especially after the one where you sit in the feeling. I would like you to share that with your partner, what that felt like and how scary it was. Because when you can tell your partner how scary it was, it's gonna help them open up to a whole new intimacy of what's going on with you. And they're gonna be able to help you. They're gonna help share that load, buffer that load. And that's really good. It's a healthy sign that your relationship you're in now can actually survive and make it. And lastly, know your triggers. If your partner says something and it triggers automatically because of your increased self-awareness, a feeling, sit in the feeling and then slowly say the trigger, rehearse the trigger. They said this and I felt this. And then that same rehearsing you have, I want you to share that with your partner. When you said this, I felt this. It wasn't your fault. It's a trigger. I'm trying to I'm trying to come to terms with it, I'm trying to be honest with it so I don't keep self-destructing good things in my life. It, this seems unsurmountable, right? It just seems like there is no way I can do this, but you can. And if at any time you feel overwhelmed, then I really recommend you contacting a therapist. I don't necessarily think you'd need to see somebody every week for weeks on end. I do think having a therapist you can talk to once every two to three weeks is going to help you at least for eight week total time. Get, get used to the idea. Start feeling more comfortable in the things you've been repressing so that you too 
can live and love in a healthy relationship that you're part of creating with another person.